Live from the Hilton at Bonnet Creek, Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Vision 2015. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to IBM Vision, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Check out ibmvisiongo.com. It's the interactive digital experience for this site. Alistair Rennie is here, he's the general manager of IBM Business Analytics. And it's really your show. Welcome to theCUBE. Great oh, to see you. Thanks very much, thanks for being here. Yeah, so you were uh, in the keynote this morning, the general session, uh, kicking things off, helping us sort of understand this portfolio that you guys have. So, good session, packed house. How yeah. do you feel? Uh, it was a really good morning. I thought, uh, you know, I thought we had a, an awful lot of interesting content, um, and feedback's been really good. Some interesting announcements. You know, a good perspective on how we're trying to take a lot of different capability that I think has been in, you know, maybe in silos. You know, as people look maybe at risk, maybe they looked at sort of what they're doing in enterprise planning, sales performance management. And I think we're trying to elevate that up to a, a way for people to think about that as an analytically driven platform to to think, you know, more about how to connect the dots across their business. In your session this morning, you talked about the Wright brothers and yeah. the skeptics that didn't believe it was actually possible to have you know human flight. Yeah, and amazing. some little beekeeping journal was writing about it, and yeah. the, the mainstream publications wouldn't. What's the analog today? Are we doing things that people just don't believe are possible? Well, I think the first thing, the, the reason I brought that story up, and I just I found it unbelievably, you know, it was hard to believe when I when I read this thing. Um, when we talk to our clients about their businesses, I think you know some really get it. Some are really trying to figure out how do they fundamentally change the way they work. Um, and they've got an incredible urgency around that. And when they think about that, almost all the new business model innovation you see is being driven by you know, analytics of some kind or engagement of some kind. So if you think about you know, what Uber's doing to transportation or you think about how I mentioned Pratt & Whitney, now they're fundamentally rethinking power plants on planes, all driven out of analytic insight. Um, and I think the people that truly take on this notion that there is a, a massive change underway and the speed of that change is unprecedented are doing amazing things. I, I think on the other hand though, there's probably too many people that are a little bit, you know, like the press corps in Dayton, Ohio in 1905 that, you know, don't believe that this change is happening and certainly I don't think understand the pace at which it's happening. So that was just a great, that was a great example of, you've got to have a lot of peripheral vision and I think especially today, it's not just change, it's really fast change. And it seems like, I mean, everybody's talking about you know, the digital economy, trying to digitize their, their businesses and, and yeah. transform their businesses. Um, and when you think about the role that data plays in that, it seems like data is this sort of fabric that cuts across everything these days. Um, what's your take on that? And are companies moving fast enough? Are they doing the things necessary to, to take advantage of these changes? So I, 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 would, I would agree that if you look at almost any major advance right now in how people are putting together the model for their business, how they're thinking about engaging with their clients, or how they're thinking about you know, optimizing, whatever it happens to be, almost 100% of that right now is driven by you know, people taking data, refining it, gaining insight, and changing the way they work. I think it's the platform for transformation for just about you know, every industry you see. Automobile, uh, automobiles, client engagement, mechanical stuff, assets and operations, how people think about security, how think of people think about counter fraud, how think of you know, compliance, any of this stuff, it's all driven by that. Um, I don't know though that we're at the stage where sort of those benefits are evenly distributed. You know, I think you've got a set of folks you know, that really lead it, they understood it, they think about you know, what is an analytic culture, they think about what are the tools, they think about the information in their organization as an asset to be curated and managed, you know, they think about new skills. Um, and they put it to work, and they're willing to do disruptive things. Data-driven organizations. Absolutely, That's and that, what you're that, that about, whole yeah. sense of culture. Um, but it's not evenly distributed. You have, you know, the long tail. I think of enterprises that are still at the very early stages of, you know, maybe basic descriptive reporting. You know, they're very much in the tell me what happened last week, as opposed to a real predictive culture and how they could change. And I think there's an awful lot of things we're doing. Things like Watson Analytics. Um, things that you know we're doing to integrate that into some of the planning tools that are going to give that next wave of adopters a leg up, let them go even faster. So you have a, a, a vast portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of our guests, John uh, Coltart, called it an yeah. embarrassment of riches. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so you've got this portfolio, and it seems like now you've got this secret weapon called Watson Analytics that overlays that, that portfolio and sort of brings it all together with 
cognitive computing, uh, visualization. Yep. Is that, are we thinking about that the right way? Is, is Watson the sort of umbrella that ties all these pieces together, or is it so, so Watson Analytics is part of the Watson portfolio that we, you know, we actually previewed it first at this conference last year and made it right. available in December. And what it, what it intends to do is to really put these powerful analytic tools into the hands of just about every business user. So I mean, you could think about what the spreadsheet did for empowering business people. I mean, think of the number of business processes that even today sit in spreadsheets. Still the number one BI tool, right? Exactly, because you know people could you know all of a sudden put directly the the tools in the hands of of the business person. Right. Um, and Watson Analytics does that, but it does it at an entirely different level. I think it's created just a new category of tool around analytic discovery. So. What it does is make simple and easy to use, you know, really complicated things. Put data in, start to explore that data through natural language, sort of the cognitive piece of this, so you can ask questions rather than writing queries, and we can suggest things and get visualizations. And we allow people to do, you know, incredible things like, you know, multivariable predictive analytics, but without having to have them be a data scientist. And it's set up so that you can, you know, wind deeper and deeper into it to get comfortable with the work we're doing. But to do that, I mean, this embarrassment of riches things, to put this together, you know, isn't something, you know, you can wake up in the morning and say we're going to be experts at this. It's the life's work of, you know, three or four different groups to make these tools consumable. So I think that's the next, the next boundary is how do you, how do you take the powerful and, and make it consumable for every business person. That's why it's so important. So, so the interesting thing yeah. to, go ahead. I'm just going to say, so as we, as we pull back the Excel analogy, it's almost like Watson, potentially Watson is the big data in analytics as Excel was back in the day, where now you're you're giving that power to the person at the desktop as opposed to waiting for yeah. the guys running big well, reports. Well, I mean, that's exactly, I mean, so think about every time you get into a meeting with a report. Usually it's okay, so this, this KPI is up or down, this isn't, you know, whatever, you know, whatever kind of insight you get. But what's always the next question? Oh, why is that? Right. What's influencing that? And then you know it gets into people postulating and hypotheses, you know, sort of just kind of guessing. What Watson Analytics does is let you go to that next level of why. What's the probability of why? What's the influencer of that? But importantly, it's it's not let's go off and have a multi-month data scientist project. It's a uh, let's do that in the next few minutes. You know that's that's a huge change right, in how right. people can consume data. It's, it's your number one thing in, in your keynote this morning, you talked about empowering every person, unlocking the enterprise advantage, and accelerating business innovation. But number one was empowering every person. Yeah. Which even if you're in a, a digital business like finance, they've been digital for a long, long time. This is a transformation, not that they are a digital business now that they weren't before, but really moving that power down into a much broader group of users. How do you spread out this insight? So we talk about an, an analytic culture, and you know, I think part of that is going to be just to make those tools available for you know, all the right people in that organization, customer facing, or you know, maybe back office, to, to actually have the tools to be able to make these assumptions and, and, and be, be, be empowered in them. And, and I mentioned this on stage, what, what's really, really surprised us is we expected a lot of the use cases would cluster, you know, maybe segmentation or something like that. And we're discovering, much like I think we did in the world of the spreadsheet, we're discovering this long tail where everybody's got, you know, the five or the ten questions a day they're just trying to get some insight into, and it's, it's about the speed to do it. So yeah, I really do think it's got the power to change how people think about consuming information. Yeah, you had the theme of analytics for everyone this morning. Yeah. We've been talking about citizens, data, citizen data scientists. Um, what are the keys to putting, and that's been a, been a criticism of the, just generically, the BI business for a long time. Very few users, very, very mm -hmm. powerful leverage, yep. but not permeating the organization. What are the changes in technology that are allowing that concept of analytics for everyone to begin to take shape? Well, I think it's a number of things. I mean, so with something like Watson Analytics, it's it's new ways of interacting with data. So, you know, to be able to actually type questions in English and be able to get answers and suggested visualizations and, you know, bootstrap people through that first part of data discovery, it is absolutely huge. I mean, because, you know, the first the first five minutes is the most important part. So helping people through that is incredibly important. Taking, um, you know, taking people through predictive analytics in a way that we don't have to go back and teach them data scientist stuff and making it consumable is, is a big piece. I also think a big part of what's uh, you know, coming into Watson Analytics is giving people you know, the tools to do uh, you know, data cleanup and data shaping. Because you know, almost nobody's got a perfect set of data to start with or you know, all the 
all the tables joined or the labels, you know, the way you want them. So, you know, tools to help them sort of in a very simple way and in many ways automatically start to clean up that data and make it accessible is another big part of it. I, I think the other thing that's been interesting is the way we're taking this to market. So, you know, a lot of BI tools have gone to market through the IT organization. You know, where you have to do right. a deployment, do, do, do an integration, take your requests to the IT team. This is all about empowering individuals. You know, this is a tool that's available on the cloud, freemium version, I individual users can get there, can put their data in, can get started. Um, because it's in the cloud, you know, the tool gets better every week. So you're not on any sort of a long IT dependent cycle. It's very much empowering individual people, and I think that's pretty. So pretty I'm going to cool. talk about that a little bit more because we do a lot of events, um, and a lot of the upstarts love to take pot shots at the established players. Of course, right? That's what they do. They get some VC good way funding. To, good way to get noticed. They make yep. a lot of noise. They yep. grow. They add some value, and then you buy them. <laughs> so that's a good, you know, circle of life. But it seems like you talked about something this morning. Talking about the enterprise advantage. Uh, I, want, I want to explore that a little bit, because you were talking earlier about Watson Analytics just sort of laying over, I, my words, overlaying sort of your portfolio, but you have a data quality and a richness that a startup's not going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the, this portfolio. What did you mean by the enterprise advantage? Can you talk about that? So, for a lot of our clients, you know, if you especially, so let's take predictive analytics, or even basic descriptive stuff. Getting an insight is an interesting thing. But that insight, you know, that insight about you know, a predictive maintenance event or a customer action or a segmentation insight, whatever it happens to be, that insight is of no value to them until it's put into action in some way. So let me, let me, uh, let me use predictive analytics around maintenance Great. as an example. So you know, we can look across uh, a class of physical assets, say, you know, I'll pick on submersible pumps, you know, for the oil industry. So, you know, expensive to get at, you want to, so, you know, we can be incredibly accurate on a class of, of assets, physical assets like that, about when they're going to need maintenance, when they might fail, when they're in an unusual condition. But just knowing that in and of itself is of no use, unless you can then connect that to, you know, a set of things to take action. To so remediate the problem. So <laughs> connect it to how you do scheduling and planning, connect it to how you manage inventory, connect it to how you schedule repair people. So the enterprise advantage is not just you know, having some interesting insight, it's actually connecting that insight all the way through action, which I think is a unique thing we can do. Yeah, and having a data quality ethos that allows you to make, take that action with, with confidence. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and it seems like a big emphasis is on speed, uh, simplifying the complexity, reducing the elapsed time. Yep. Where are you in that? So, no vision. so I think you know we've done as IBM over the course of you know the last several years we've done more than fifty thousand engagements with clients around applied analytics, and you know the, the value people get out of those is tremendous. But one of the things we've gotten out of it is you do fifty thousand of these engagements and you start to see the patterns, and I think what we're going to start to see with the next generation of analytics solutions is how do you move from things being maybe more bespoke or custom to how do you take those patterns and then start to distill them into analytic solutions that have a very specific problem, come with you know, a set of all the ingredients included. Here's a analytic model, here's the right data models, here's the right connectors to the other systems you need to influence, here's a user experience that a business person can understand, and, and start to deliver these analytic solutions much more out of the box. And I think you know that you know that's an evolution we've seen before in technology, right. and I think we're at the brink of that, which is a, a huge scaling factor for well, how people take advantage. Well, you're, you, Alistair, you were on stage this morning with Deloitte, yep, um, gold standard in that you know, financial you know, compliance area, uh, announcing a relationship, a partnership. Talk about what that partnership is all about, sure. and then I want to talk about other possible. So, opportunities. you know, as much as people are moving quickly to put analytics to work in all sorts of, you know, customer engagement or, you know, back office or what they're doing machinery, you know, for many industries where regulation applies, it, it is just a whole new world in terms of, you know, regulatory compliance and expectations from the market. Uh, financial services, pharma, I mean, pick them all. And, and in many cases, the ability for people to actually transform is gated by their ability to comply as they transform. So in the same way we think about changes in data and analytics being applied to customer facing things, you know, IBM and certainly our, our partner in this Deloitte think that there's a next generation of how to look at compliance. So what, what we're trying to do is say, let's take advantage of 
you know, for example, being able to look at, you know, most compliance historically or regulatory stuff is backwards looking on, you know, essentially databases of historical things looking for, you know, some kind of past trend. What if you could start to look at these masses of data in real time to catch events as they're happening and take action? You can do that sort of thing now. What if you move from describing, you know, a compliance state to being able to predict a compliance state? Um, what if you, uh, went from only looking at structured data coming out of maybe a financial system to being able to look at a mass of unstructured data in terms of how your employees are conducting themselves or how communications is flowing, looking for that unknown pattern. All of that now becomes possible. So I think the combination of you know, what we're delivering from an analytics perspective combined with, you know, Deloitte is really the gold standard in, in risk consulting. Um, you know, what they know from a industry model, from a industry solution perspective, from a what's going on deeply with the regulations. You know, the ability to kind of rethink analytically powered intelligent risk solutions I think is a pretty big opportunity. Well, for the skeptics in the audience, I'm reminded of your Wright Brothers story and, and you're seeing, you know, things like Watson, you know, beat a, 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 a Jeopardy champion. Anybody who can relate to this in a fraud detection. Yep. You get your credit card, you know, somebody grabs your credit card in, in real time. It used to take six months to discover something like that. So so these capabilities are, are here today. Yeah. Are, are there, Alistair, are there other industries that you guys see going after for potentially out of the box solutions? Can you talk about that a little bit? From a risk perspective or more generally? Generally. So um, it's hard to, almost every industry we see you know, has an opportunity to you know, advance themselves around analytics. So we're going to focus around, we're, we're actually going to announce some uh, some solutions in this space next week, and we'll share the URL. This month. With, yep, 28th of, okay. uh, of May. We're thinking in areas, obviously, every part of retail and the distribution industry has a keen desire to understand not only their client, but how to look at supply chain optimization, yep. merchandising optimization, financial services, certainly about risk, financial services around behavioral segmentation, around approaches to wealth management. We look at telecommunications, I mean, there's analytics at play in terms of customer understanding, and obviously a big part of what they're doing is network optimization, understanding what they're, you know, we've got a great set of capability with a, a tool that we call the Now Factory to understand in real time what's going on in a mobile network from a client experience perspective. Um, uh, asset heavy industries, uh, uh, industrial, aerospace. So it, it's really hard to imagine a space that isn't isn't fundamentally being re reinvented. Around it, it, every single one of those <coughs> industries, any there's not an industry you can mention. Financial services, retail, telco, automotive, uh, heavy equipment. Yes, <laughs> aerospace. Every one of them is getting disrupted. Healthcare. Healthcare. Every one of them is getting disrupted, and and there's this data layer. Yeah. that's emerging on, on which organizations are building new business models on top of that, or they're getting disrupted by yep. new business models. Or looking, to in, or looking to optimize across the whole business. I mean, look at healthcare. It's not You're so right. much about, certainly we're doing amazing things with Watson around diagnosis and care, but you know, part of the new IBM healthcare uh, organization that got announced a couple of weeks ago is how do you look at optimizing all these things into higher quality care at a, at a better economic price point? It's interesting how the, the bit has flipped in your world going from one that was almost purely risk focused, risk oriented 10, five even years ago to now one that's opportunity. Yeah. Is, the question is, is it harder for a company to understand who's trying to disrupt them? You know, everybody in retail, for instance, has an Amazon war room, right? <laughs> or is it harder to figure out where the opportunities are with the data, right? It's, uh, it's know, risk and reward, isn't it? Uh, well, we see, we see both. And that's part of the reasons I think you know we're trying to you know package some of this capability into something that's more identifiable to a business person. I think I think it's it's increasingly now you know the line between the technology side of the organization, the business side of the organization around analytics is is totally blurred. You know you, we don't talk to anybody now, and you know it's in marketing. I mean I know doctors you know at some of the hospitals we work at that are data scientists as much as they are right. you know physicians. So one of our big focuses here is you know how do we put the value of analytics into a m much more focused business context. And I think that ability to accelerate the dialogue with you know, business people with problems to help them connect to the technology is a big part of kind of expanding that adoption. So, we're out of time, but um, Vision 2015, maybe you could summarize it, give us the bumper sticker as the trucks are pulling away from you know, Orlando, what's the big theme here? What should people take away from Vision 15? Well, I really think it's the three things we talk about today. It's there's a new generation of ways to empower everyone to be, you know, analytics at their fingertips, better decision making. 
I think that insight, when translated across the entire enterprise, delivers advantage. And I think as people look at their businesses, there are an incredible number of ways to fundamentally innovate what they do around data and analytics. Excellent, that's the Rennie. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, good luck with the rest of the event and thanks for having us here. Thank you, real pleasure. All right, keep it right there, buddy. Jeff Frick and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from IBM Vision 2015 in Orlando. We'll be right back. <laughs>